Hello everybody, Mariner here. How are you doing? If you heard the crash, the cat has just knocked something off the table. <laughs> yeah, I think it might be one of those shows. Um, how are you doing, Gabe? Are you all right, mate? Doing all right, Mariner. Thanks. Nice to see you. I know it's been a crazy week. Mariner, you have some uh, some new decoration there on your on your hand. What's what's going on with that? Well, I I can't tell a lie. I was was looking for a golf ball um, and I fell in a ditch at the golf club yesterday morning. <laughs> I had to get dragged out. I was more bothered I was I was more bothered I was gonna slide straight into a bloody python. <laughs> slide. What kind of golf courses are you playing on with like was a ravines golf and course. pythons and shit? <laughs> the trouble is it when you know my golf balls tend to go quite near to water. <laughs> so so do I. Uh, that's quite fitting for, it, for you, I guess. It's not, been, it's not been a good week. Anyway, <laughs> enough of that. But it has been a good week for you because yeah, you got right. 112 points. Is that correct? That's correct. Did it. <laughs> Hell, teeth. That's uh, a good score. It's a great score. I mean, <laughs> better than I could have ever dreamed. I mean, it, it was a high-scoring week, to, to be fair. Um, but the returns just kept on coming. Uh, crazy, right? I'm, I think uh, all four of us were over 100 points. Um, all, yeah, four, four century marks here. At, at yeah, that I'm, actually, I'm actually going to bring... Uh, I know Hippo and Nima did the, uh, the league, but I'm actually going to just make, give a couple of stats about our league. It's quite remarkable actually um and anyway and also you've got your first matchups section of the season and you've entitled it a splattering of matchups which is quite appropriate considering i splattered myself into a ditch yesterday That's and, right. and you're also bringing something new to the table as well aren't you xgot so uh, as I understand, that's expected Game of Thrones. Is that that's right? Exact, that's exactly right. When when you play the Game of Thrones, you either win or you die, as they say. So. Right. <laughs> well, well, clearly you know nothing, FPL Mariner. Because <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what you're on about. Anyway, right, <laughs> shall, shall, we, uh, shall we dive in and see what's going on? Let's just get rid of a few little bits and bobs first, as usual. First of all, um, and I've remembered to put the, the uh, screen slides up this week which is a first as well um we've donated uh, we keep pressing this but we've donated that hundred dollars now to the heart fund um which is our chosen charity and we're going to do it again once we get to two thousand followers uh and nima's going to be ali g at 1500 so we, we need about 400 more followers for ali g and 900 more for 200 dollars. so keep it coming and uh, and really just again guys just thank you very much we're all very humbled about the support that net that hall again there's some very nice things being said about us so thank you same with the pods as well do pick that up where you listen to them and as for the league um we have fxg fg1 xnb is the code uh we have some prizes um we have first prizes from shirt loot box uh, we also have a book from Matt Whelan, FPL Obsessed, and he'll sign it or it'll be a Kindle. And we've also got a, a subscription from Fantasy Football Fix. So, yeah, come along and take on Big Man Bacar, Tom Stevenson, and everybody and join the 161 other players who topped 100 in this game week on our in our league. And 161st, I was just looking for the gap, and I love this team name, Crystal Phallus. By Li by Lindsay Oliver was the was the team. Was the team in wow, that's great. That's a great name. What a fantastic name! Clearly, it's banned. Um, the game week <laughs> change name next week, Lindsay. I bet. Um, <laughs> the game week average was sixty nine points across the competition, right? Yeah, sixty nine. Yeah. Do you know how many members of our league and there's four hundred and something in it? Do you know how many members got under 69? <laughs> have, a guess. have a guess. This is one reason why I never gave you the slides. On, <laughs> out of, so out of 400? Yeah. Less than 69? I'm going to say, I mean, at least, what, 250 got less than 69? 15. <laughs> what? 
that, that's that's ridiculous. I, I think we have some very loyal followers because I think there's a lot of people. <laughs> Maybe they've been following us. God help us when we have a bad week, game. But um, <laughs> but yeah, three point eight percent of our league was under the the FPL average. Well wow. done, boys. You hauled. And and, and, and that. to that to that three point eight percent. Thanks for being in the league. You're being kicked out today. <laughs> You've been well, off the I, I posted something to Tom. I said, you know, must must keep up with Tom. Must keep up with Tom. Must keep up with Tom. <laughs> uh, that's that's the mantra. I think he also got 112. Tom ah. Stevenson. So yeah, there we go. Oh. So that's so that's the league. Um, we're just going to say hello to a few people, and I'm going to let you loose with philosophy and then the matchup. So we've got Raman Than on. Hello, mate. Gary. Hi, mate. Joe. Hi. Uh, Serahul, oh, goodness me, I'm terrible with names. I do apologise if I pronounce that wrong. That's, uh, I'm still getting up for folding in this damn ditch. Nicholas, um, Nima, oh hello, mate. Uh, Shavran, James, uh, Akash, Akshay, um, Mr. A. We netted that haul. We did. Um, so did you? I hope you did. Um, I'll keep going down. Yeah, I think. Hang on, here we go. We've got Donny. We've got FPL Rubber Ducky. Uh, and if I've missed anyone, I do apologise. But we'll shout a few more out later on. But as always with this show, it's interactive. Get into the chat. Get chatting between yourselves. Debate what we're on about. And debate this next section, which is the philosophy section, Gabe. And I have no idea what you're doing. <laughs> You will soon enough, man. Here we go. This is the uh, the FPL <laughs> philosophy section, um, our, our newest weekly section. Um, so this week's quote uh, comes from, you know, there I have I've already mentioned that there's one book that's kind of like my Bible, and that's the Tao Te Ching. If there if there could be like a like a companion to to that, it would definitely be this book by Robert Persig. It's called Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. Uh, I think I would be somebody with like multiple Bibles and like just have bring in all different points of view. Uh, but the quote says this to live only for some future goal is shallow. It's the sides of the mountain which sustain life. <laughs> You've taken the slide off the screen there. No, I was just trying to see if your phone was ringing. I could hear a phone ringing somewhere. I don't even know where my phone is. Oh. Let me take that from the top. <laughs> to live only for some future goal is shallow. It's the sides of the mountain which sustain life, not the top. Here is where things grow. So I, you know, I tell you, first, this, this week took me a while to find the quote, I think. And, and that kind of like shows me, it took me a while to find my bearings. And I think that the reason why, why this quote stood out to me is because we've only just begun to climb the mountain and of, of the FPL season. And we're also consumed with rank and how well we did in the first week. And, and we're all also so hungry for like concrete information from that first week that we think th we, we have a tendency to take the first week and say, okay, this is the way it is. This is law. And this, it's, it, we do have more concrete knowledge, but we don't have definitive knowledge. It's only been one game week out of 38. So it's just a reminder that in that one game week, like things are growing, knowledge is growing within us. And we need to like, we need to think, not think that we know everything in order to give room for that knowledge to kind of bear fruit. So it's just game week one, take the knowledge, we move. Excellent. I like that. And don't, and, and uh, we're not going to, we don't need to go into the transfer trends because Nima's had his rant already. I nearly, <laughs> fell out of, I nearly fell out of bed laughing when I was watching the uh -huh. show on Tuesday night, or Tuesday morning, I should, or Wednesday morning to me, I should say. Uh, so, yeah, we're not going to go into that. And, but it's early, isn't it? Let's face it. So, it's no train wreck. So, let's say, keep going. I don't, I'll say, I'm not, we're not even, we're not even going to talk about our teams much tonight. We're not going to put them on the screen. We don't need to. I'm not doing a thing. I've changed my bench. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> we move as we say. We so let's move into the matchups, mate. So what I'll do is I'll add your um, screen to the, uh, to the slides. Okay. Bear with and me I will let you go. 
All right, I'm just if getting ready. If you're ready. If I'm ready. Of course I'm do ready. I need, do I need to uh, say hello to a few more people whilst you're not? You can say hello to some people. Uh, well, uh, I, we, let me get So we've got tips. Hey, Harry, how are you doing? It looks like Hippo's here. Uh, um, Barry is here. Don is here, as we've said. Neiman nearly passed out. Check out 57 minutes till 1 hour 10 of Tuesday's Compass show if you want Nima's, Miss Bad Nima's rant. Yeah, <laughs> that's fair enough. I think the ranter is in the room, or the ranter is in the crowd, according to according to Donny. <laughs> Are you ready yet? Ready. Right, okay. Over to you, my friend. Okay, oh, well, so... <clears throat> put that um, on for you as well, so you can see. Right on. Okay, so uh, this week's matchups was, I, you know, and I called it a, a splattering, right? A, a splattering of game week one impressions, and this it kind of builds on that the philosophy of the week. What we've what we've just witnessed in game week one is very much a splattering of impressions, and I want to kind of, uh, um, you know, underscore underscore that point um, because once does not a pattern make. I guess I'll throw another a bonus quote out there as well. Um, <laughs> So, so I just, I just kind of, it was a, for me, it was an, an, a bit of, it was an organic process kind of writing matchups. I didn't know which direction I was going to go in. I started writing about some things and then I changed and I wrote about something else. I had this whole piece written up about Arsenal against Brentford. Um, but to be perfectly honest, it's kind of boring. So I just, I just kept moving. Um, and, and I got a request from, um, one of one of our one of our uh, listeners at actor underscore Abdul, um, who asked me about Lucas Mora, so he turned me on to Lucas Mora. Uh, so I thought I'd take a look. And watching that game, I, I thought it was quite interesting. Um, it stood. What stood out to me is that Lucas Mora and um, and Hung Min Sun, or like Lucas Mora, kind of like everything. He's the player that makes Nuno's system with with Spurs make sense. He was, he was kind of like the glue. He was it, at the back. He was recovering balls. He was linking play. He was, um, he was involved in quite a bit of, of, the, of the gameplay, and I thought that was quite interesting. And looking around the field, it seemed to me that, um, that Nuno, um, he was taking a, a bit of a page out of, out of Pep's book by employing the Lucas Mora in some of the same ways Pep uses Gundogan. Um, except rather than on the left where Gundogan operates, um, you know, Lucas Mora was on the right. So what I, I there were a couple of things that I checked with this, and I'll try to um, paint the description for our, the podcast listeners as well as, as best I can here. Um, Sun's positioning was was fluid. There, there was a lot of times where he he started at the nine in the four two three one. There was a lot of times where he would pull wide um, to create space for midfielders to run in. Um, but he tended to pull to the right, uh, combining with with Lucas Mora. So here I have two, two. Um, I, I guess one one is a pass map, the other is a passes received heat map. And the Lucas Mora pass map it's showing where where he's connecting play on that right hand side of the field, also somewhat centrally a little bit. Um, but he's he really is like wh exactly where you would expect the what is that that would be the seven to be in a four two three one which is the, the right winger um he did drop quite deep he does have a green dot right by his own box just outside his own box that was actually that pass right there i, I will go over it that was the goal that that was the pass that, that ended up in, in son's goal um which he, he actually played a, an integral part and then son's passes received heat map uh, just kind of in front of, right in front of Lucas Mora, shifted over to that right hand side. Um, just, just this is just to kind of exemplify that they they had a, a connection. There were there was some some synergy, which which I'll show in, in just a little bit here as well. Um, the next thing I'll show here is the recoveries heat map. If I can get through it, window. Uh, there we go. Uh, here are Lucas Mora's recoveries compared to Song's recoveries. Um, just to show, Lucas Mora had ten recoveries in the last game. So, while he's while also linking midfield play and making uh, late runs into the box, which I'll show in just a moment here. These are three elements of of Gundogan's uh, typical contributions for Man City: um, recoveries, you know, recoveries, winning the ball, um, linking play from from midfield to forward. And late runs into the box are kind of the three elements I've, I identified that it's that are similar between Mora and uh, and Gundogan. 
Um, so let's start with the first element of that, and that is linking play. So here in, in this play, um, in the first play, we see, so Hoybier had ju has just won the ball from Raheem Sterling. Raz did one of his typical, just kind of like soft dribbles where he dribbles right into the defender. The defender seems kind of surprised, like, oh, uh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take that. And they just kind of take the ball away from him. Um, Hoybier does that quite easily. And we can see Lucas, uh, Lucas kind of checking, moving away from the central part of midfield and checking to the ball a little bit. Hoybier sees him right away. And, um, and and passes him the ball. Um, we'll go on from here. The next play, Mora collects the ball. Um, and and this, this one shows shows timing for me. Lucas and, and, and Son show great chemistry here as they read the visual cues. So when, when you're playing, you know, a coach will always tell you, read the visual cues, read your own player's visual cues. And that's, that's a, a way, that's a form of nonverbal communication on the field. Um, so I, I just find that Lu Lucas and Son do this perfectly here. The the pass as is, is played right at the right time. Um, Mora is like kind of winding up to, to take that to, to make that pass, and right as Son is kind of taking off on the run. Um, what, what's really impressive, I would say here, is that the their their chemistry is so precise, their dance is so precise that the pass catches uh, Ruben Diaz, who's who's recovering catches him on the wrong foot. If that pass is made a half step sooner, which is a half step is probably, I don't know, like a quarter of a second sooner, um, Diaz could have turned his hips to face the ball and and kind of ended this opportunity before it even began. So I find that right right in there where just the way Diaz's hips are, are turned um, just shows just great timing by the part of Lucas, which which tells me he's in, he's in quite good form. Once, once the play develops, Son receives the ball. Look how far back the, the, the three defenders you have. Um, you have Ruben and Cancelo kind of, they're about two yards or maybe about a yard or two inside the box, and Son is right outside the box. Lucas has continued his run, um, which is really nice to see, and he's, he's an option right here. If Son wants to pass it to Lucas on the right side of the box there, Lucas will have a, it'll be Lucas against the goalkeeper alone. I think maybe Son should have done that in this case um, and, and given that ball to Lucas. But you, what you really like to see here is that he continues his run and he always uh, remains part of the play. Uh, next one here, we see Lucas in, in the next uh, image here, we see another counter attack. Um, Hoybier is bring, bringing the ball upfield. He's dribbling the ball upfield this time. Um, and Lucas gets out of his way. He pulls wide right as Hoybier is coming up the right side of the field. Hoybier is still about 15, 10, maybe 10, 10, 15 yards inside his own half. Um, Lucas pulls wide right as Son, may, as Son makes a run into the space behind Ake. So Son is about, um, he's about 15, 20 yards in the opposition half and Ake is covering him. He's dragging Ake away, and there's a bunch of space in front of Hoybier. Um, and that space there is created by, by Lucas. Um, where I lost myself here. There we go. Um, the, this play, what happens in this play is it, <laughs> I got three, I keep getting confused in my windows here. Um, what happens in this play is rather than play that ball through to, rather than play that ball through to some there behind Ake, Hoybier, for some reason, drags the ball across and plays it to Reguilon. So when Reguilon, here we, here we see after the play develops, there's, there's a deflection, the ball ends up at Reguilon's feet. Reguilon is surrounded by four players, and Son is, surround, is also surrounded kind of by four players. They share two players that surrounds them. Son, Son recognizes the space between Ake and Ruben Diaz, so he takes off into the space for, for Reguilon to play the ball. If Reguilón can squeeze the ball between Fernandinho and Ruben Diaz, then he'll get Son in space in, in on goal. But Reguilón doesn't see that. What I like here in this play is that Lucas sees this whole play developing. And what he does is he follows, he follows Son's run. Um, so, so he follows Son's run and, and takes the space left by Son. Lucas receives the ball in his space right at the top of the box. 
he tries a shot now now his shot is quite poor <laughs> to, to be perfectly honest um but his what, what i like is his the awareness of his teammates the awareness of the of the unfolding play are all really good signs for lucas and his his kind of his role with um in linking play is and his role in filling space tell me that he he could carve kind of a permanent role in this team which was you know that that's one thing that we didn't know going into the season is what kind of role he would have and how permanent that role would be based on his what well, I saw in game week one, again, it's just one game week. His role seems pretty integral to, to the team here. So I would expect that to continue. Um, now I'm going to go up here and just show his, the shots. This is just to compare Lucas's shots with, uh, with Son's shots. It's, it's the, uh, the a shots map from fantasy football scout. Um, Son had five shots in the game, four of them outside of the box, one inside the box. Lucas had three shots in the game one of them outside the box which you just saw and two of them inside the box so he actually had more shots in the box than son did which kind of speaks to the the late runs mood going into the box um and against you know weaker opposition i would expect those numbers to increase for lucas and he could prove to be a fantasy asset at some point still very much a wait and see for now um because one game uh, against city uh we, we just we just need to see more Here's another thing that I wanted to show you guys. Um, this is the this is a radar map from understat.com. And I just I just wanted to bring this up because it shows the synergy between Lucas and Son. How Lucas, um, you look at his key passes per 90, three key passes, his XG, XG buildup per 90 is 0.2. Um, his XA is 0.11, which isn't, isn't so high, but I, I Lucas could end up assisting the assister. That XA is a little bit concerning. Uh, it depends how deep he's playing and what the game situations are are like in each game. But notice how those stats really complement Sun's stats. X, X, his, X, his XG per 90 is 0.27. He took five shots in the game. So Sun is becoming more of the um, the kind of the goal scorer, and Lucas is uh, is the creator and behind them. What are, what are your thoughts about uh, about Lucas and, and Son and that relationship there, Mario, well, before we move on to Adam? I mean, so. To be honest, I didn't watch the game. <laughs> it was all in the middle of the night. So yeah. I'm probably not the best person to ask. But look, I mean, um, there's a few comments in the in the chat, one of which I'm not sure you'll you'll appreciate too much because um, <laughs> you know it's if Kane is back, is this redundant? Um yeah. it's an interesting point. I, I look if, if there's another comment is if if Lucas Moura is 6.5, you know, if he is what we'd watch him for a little bit longer, perhaps, but he could be super value, right? He, I, I think he could, he could present incredible value or, or maybe not. He could, like I said, he could assist the assister, but I think it's definitely one to, to watch. If, if Kane is back, you know, you, you have to think about what it's, it, I think it's a really good question, right? What, what happens to the team if Kane is back? Well, Son goes back out on the left, right? Lucas can still play the same role, can't he? With That's interesting. I mean, if if um, I, I I don't I, I think that it's it's possible that Lucas plays the same role if if yeah. Kane is back, and and I think Son would still get involved more in the attack. It would be a lopsided attack. That's how I would approach it. But definitely something that you have to watch out for that dynamic for sure. Yeah, I mean, there's uh, yeah, you know, is Kane going to play for 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 Spurs again from? uh hippo you know he's you know and, and uh what's ramanthan is saying uh kane not back for wolves as per nuno isn't it at least he wouldn't start uh you know james c's firmly on the team lucas team Love lucas it, yeah team lucas um yeah i mean look he's, he sounds an interesting option I, i'm all for trying to find these cheap players <laughs> and, and you know at the end of the day i test uh, you know for once in my life for once in my fpl life I used the eye test and it paid off for me because I bought Menoramari. So why not? I, why not? First yeah. success for me for the season and it wasn't through stats. It was through the eye test. Victory for the eye test. Victory for the eye test over the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Um, yeah, fabulous. So um, have you, are you moving on to the, what's, the, what's this next section then you've got? Have you got uh, so, so the next section is Adam Armstrong. Oh, right. 
Oh, I actually, you know, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to show you guys the um, <laughs> the the flick. You know why? Because I, I forgot to put it in my document here. But just just really quickly, I I, cause I just love this. This this was on the goal. So this this was a this was a ball that was headed out. Um, I believe Dyer won this header. Lucas comes to the ball for for those that in the viewing. He's got Fernandinho behind him. He's got um, baby Jack Grealish in front of him, and and he does this flick, turns a, turns the other way just to add some like Ronaldinho class here. As as uh, who is that? Is that Bergvine? I think that's Bergvine making the run. But this flick leads to the counter attack that leads to Son's goal. So look look how close he is to his own box. Come flicks that ball, and that turns into a goal. He's not going to get any credit. He's not going to get any XA for that. But he he gets points in my book for for that play. I was really impressed with 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 what Lucas did um, in this match. All right, excellent. So excellent. Uh, Armstrong, you want to have a quick look at Armstrong? Yep. I'm just gonna leave that there while I go into some just some some stats for Armstrong. But I'll I'll leave the image there for for his really just lovely lovely goal. Um, here we go. So Adam Armstrong, I I have to say like I'm. I, I I don't I know nothing about Adam Armstrong. Never watched him in the championship. Highly touted when when he was signed by by Southampton. There was a the FPL community. There was, you know there was a buzz around him, and I, I I I wasn't interested. I just wasn't paying attention because it was so far off my radar. So this is so I decided to kind of like look into that. Um, and th these are some some of his stats from the championship last season. He played he played a little over thirty seven hundred minutes. He had 4.83 shots per 90, 2.17 uh, shots on target per 90. That's a shot accuracy of 45%. He had 28 goals with an XG of 27.76. So he's, he cost six million in FPL. Um, and if we're taking this should be uh, if we're taking like two thirds of his stats or, or half his stats, depending on on you know how how you rate the championship and how much more difficult you think the Premier League is. I, th I think his his numbers could still be pretty impressive. Um, to add to add to these stats, I just wanted to bring up his his xG on target, his xGOT. So, and and I'll get to some more xG on target uh, in the next section here. But I was exploring some of the highest xG on target players of the week, and I saw um, Armstrong. He he was sitting there at fourth best with one point zero three xG on target. Um, when I took a closer look, I noticed that his XG against Everton was only 0.5, um, and he had the most uh, added XG to a shot when on target. And so this is this is why when um, when Shea Adams kind of uh, plucks that ball from Keane and plays it into to uh, to AA here. We can see AA go, he's up against Pickford. It's a one v one, obviously a high XG uh, opportunity here. But rather than it's it's all about the finish here. If he if this is just a normal finish into into you know a part of the net, we can see the we can see in, in this image Pickford is is this is so this image for the for the podcast listeners is from behind the goal. Pickford comes out. You can see how he's spread quite wide. He's covering the near post really well. Um, so. Uh, Armstrong decides to go far post with this shot, and I'll go to the to the next image here. When he goes far post, he doesn't just go far post. I circled in green just how far he goes, and it's way way up in the corner. I think in my article I wrote this is um this is where where uh, where people hide their stash. That's where that's where I'm gonna call these areas. And when you place a shot on target way up in that corner the XG on target goes way up because this shot is almost unstoppable. So that's why, uh, that's why Armstrong's X, XG on target goes up to 1.03 from, a uh, from 0.5, uh, XG. And I was wondering, and then coincident, and then I was wondering, well, I, I've never seen Armstrong play. So I don't know if this is a, if this was luck or if this is a, a habit for him. And coincidentally, I was listening to the, uh, the football tactics podcast from the athletic and they were saying that um armstrong was the only major goal scorer in the championship last season 
So we're looking at, um, you know, Tony and Sar and, and all these players. And there's a, there's a Reading player whose name I, I don't remember who played about half the season whose stats are ridiculous. Um, but none of these players had an XG on target higher than their XG. Armstrong was the only one. So apparently he, he consistently uh, adds XG to, to his shots. Um, and I thought, so he, I think Armstrong could be a really shrewd pick against teams that give up XG to, to teams when shots are on target. So if we're looking at last season stats, these were, uh, Newcastle gave up 4.63, uh, XG when shots or added 4.63 XG when the shot was on target. West Ham added 6.68, Burnley added 6.26, Palace added 6.9, Arsenal added 7.04 and Leeds added the most with 7.51. Now, the teams that gifted the most XG when conceding shots on target in game week one, obviously just a singular game week for this season, but they are Crystal Palace, who added uh, 0.53 XG, Wolves, who added 0.69 XG, Villa, who added 0.74 XG, Southampton, who added 0.91 XG, and Newcastle, who added 0.96 XG. Um, but this is a small sample size and doesn't tell us much without looking at each goal individually. I'm not going to do that here. I mean, I, I'm thinking, for example, Villa added 0.74 XG went on target. Well, Sar took that shot that was deflected, that was unstoppable because it was deflected. So that added a bunch of XG. You really have to take these these um, these numbers a bit with a grain of salt when they're when they're, it's such a small sample size. Um, but I, I kind of like um, you know Adam Armstrong for this week. Um, I United. Let's see, United conceded 0.6 XG to Leeds, but their XG on target conceded was 0.1. So they they added, you know, uh, we all saw the Ailings wonder strike. That added 0.4 XG to the shot. I think United have a tendency to do that. Um, so I, I wouldn't be surprised if, if Armstrong could really sneak one here. If you're playing like in a, in a daily fantasy or something like that, I think Armstrong is a sneaky pick. Hmm, interesting. What um, I think you've you've frightened James at least. Armstrong might be the reason I bench Luke Shaw this week. Damn, that's a bold call. <laughs> Luke Luke Shaw could get an attacking return. That, that's, so like, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, for the viewers who, if you're catching us for the first time, one of the things we do is trap of the week, and Manchester United's defence did come up in discussion, didn't it? Yeah. For this reason, actually, for this reason, um, well, I, you know, this, full... this reason and, and and Southampton's home, they're their home yes. opener, you know. Exactly. Yeah, an interesting one. Let's see how that one plays out. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, but no, I, I mean, six million could be an absolute steal, right? I mean, he shoots, he shoots on sight. Apparently, he's two footy, uh, two. <laughs> he plays with both feet. You know. Um, Yes, his numbers might come down from the championship. I'm sure they do. I don't rate yeah. Southampton very highly, but if if they get a chance, he might well stick it away. So, I mean, when when you're taking the approximately five shots a game in the championship, and you're you're getting about half of them on target, and you're adding XG to the ones that you do get on target, I think it's that it's that percent shots on target plus the at uh, the XG the uh, the high XGOT. Those two stats combined, I think, really show a lot of potential for Armstrong. Yeah. And they're talking, I mean, I've not looked, but and I can't look at the moment because I've got all this, both my screens are full of stuff for this show. But uh, apparently there's a fixture swing around game week eight for Southampton as well, which might be another option. Mm. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's move on. Um, and uh, I mean, I dare say we'll, we'll, we'll probably touch on some of these up for the que in the questions later on as well. So there's quite sure, a debate going on about the championship now, which is great as well. So, um, okay, keep going, man. All right, so now we're headed to, this is the X, XGOT matchup. So the expected Game of Thrones matchup for, for those fans. Um, you, you either win or you die. That's, that's the motto for Game of Thrones, Mariner. Um, but yeah, so expected um, goals on target. The top five players for expected goals on target in Game Week 1 were, number one, Antonio, 1.56. Then Wilson with 1.06, then Calvert Lewin with 1.05, and fourth is Armstrong with 1.03. So I just wanted to like, I'm really interested in expected goals on target because 
the ball has to be on target to go in unless you're unless it's going to be an own goal right so i want i want to dive more this this season into into creating on opportunities that that lead to um, shots on target and looking more for players that get those shots on target so uh, looking for antonio and his matchup in this game week antonio's up against a seemingly very tough matchup against the leicester side so leicester conceded only a 0.2 expected goals on target conceded in game week one we can thank adama trior his poor finishing for that though um, i don't think that will be sustainable through the season and lesser may not be as stout as, as we think um they still you know they conceded 1.49 xg to wolves so to get a better finisher in there and i think there's potential there uh number two wilson Wilson faces a reeling Villa side coming off a loss to newly promoted Watford, of course. Um, but from an expected goals on target perspective, uh, you know, I mentioned the the deflection on SARS goal. I think that that number is inflated. So it seems like a good matchup for Wilson, but we all know Emi Martinez, and Emi Martinez sucks XG out of shots. So that, you know, that could come back to, to bite somebody that's betting too much on Wilson this week. Um, or target may just kind of fall apart again um and that defense might fall apart we we don't know yet one week one game week i don't think tells us enough on that front dcl and i know we'll talk about more uh, more about dcl later uh, but he confronts the lead side who added oh who only added 0.13 xg to shots that were on target um Leads is at home, which the, we know they're much better at home. They'll have Phillips back as well. They're much better with Phillips there, plugging that midfield. Um, and so DCL, uh, it's, there's, there's a lot of uncertainty in, in this matchup, I find, um, because of the um, kind of the, what is it, the, the multiple personality nature of Leeds defense when they're home and when they're away and when they're with Calvin Phillips or, or without. And then lastly, uh, Armstrong has a challenging matchup against United, but they did concede unexpected goals on target of one compared to their expected goals conceded of, points, of 0 0.6, like I mentioned earlier. So I think that there could be potential for a very clinical AA. Um, so that's the expected, um, expected goals on target matchup. Okay. Um, are you saving the other bits for in the, in the other side? The, the only thing I have left is the Little Prince. Yeah, we'll save that for the because uh, we know where that's going to pop out, right? All right, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, right, okay. Thank you very much, mate. It's uh, really good. Now, I'll tell you what, you've had some very nice comments along the lines of this is amazing analysis, fair play from FBL Rubber Ducky. Uh, and whilst you're at it, you know, I'm getting comments like from James C. Great analysis. Not sure if the slide should be moved here. <laughs> I was too busy watching you to turn the slide over. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> well, what would we do without Dave? Huh? Oh, well, I was too busy admiring that that finish, that top bins finish from from Armstrong. Quite frankly, I was, was just, nice. I was just enjoying it. That was that's my nice. that was that was my uh, excuse anyway. Right, Matt. Thank you. Uh, we'll come back to you. Obviously, we'll come back to you with the other stuff as well. Um, let me just add my screen back in. So, right now, let's get over to the engine room, um, and this is where we start looking into the fixtures. Uh, difficulty ratings and things like that looking at this week also we're going to look at our long-range weather forecast for fpl going out to game week six as well this now we're starting we're in the season so let's see where we're, we're looking in the longer range um obviously we're going to use gabe's uh insight and his lens uh and hopefully we're going to net some more holes and predict some clean sheets um we're going to try and identify trap of the week and a hauler um but look let's first of all see how we did last week and it's this is not like last year, guys. Don't panic. We're not going to spend half an hour on this. We're going to spend about two minutes. So, right. Let's have a look. So, we predicted uh, Liverpool to get two and a half goals. Yes, they did. Okay. Okay. Salah got his return as usual at the start. We predicted Chelsea two and a half goals. Yes, they did. Um, very, very obvious matchup. And we predicted Manchester United against Leeds to get two and a half goals or more. And they did. Um, these were all supported by quite strong um, predictions by Draft Hound as well. And I will be looking more and more at these type of odds this season because I think they're a good way of sense checking what we what we actually come out with. Um, okay, so that's that one. 
let's keep going. Now we went to clean sheets. We predicted Crystal Palace and uh, Chelsea to get a Crystal Palace, a clean sheet against Crystal Palace. Get my teeth out. Yes, absolutely, they did. Uh, it was predicted to be 61% clean sheet. Yeah, fairly obvious. Okay. Then we had a look at Wolves against Leicester, and I remember saying I thought they might cancel each other other out. It took a Vardy wonder strike to prevent me from being right. Actually, mm -hmm. I was quite quite interested in that one. Um, yeah. Although, so although it, we're lesser a little unfortunate uh, not, not to score more. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm just looking at it from my I'm looking from the perspective of the score, and in fact, it was a wonder strike which created it. But all the same, look, it's a bit of fun this as well. But yeah. I think you know, it looked like the, it was a bit of a left field punt, shall we say? Mm. But it wasn't a million miles out. Um, <laughs> we did get one horribly wrong. We went for Zuma um, for the haul of the week, but we only had to look just to his side, and Chalabar did get that haul. Mm. So you know we were right that a Chelsea that Chelsea would get a clean sheet. We we just got the wrong defender. <laughs> <laughs> so do we no, get do we get half a point for that one? And and the other one, um, yeah, <laughs> David Moyes, right, right. We were right that they would not keep a clean sheet. We said that their defence was possibly a trap. Kufal owners were totally mudded. Thanks to thanks to Twinkle Toes himself, Saint Maximan. I thought it was that that was the champagne moment of the entire weekend for me. I thought that was marvelous. Watching it, it was it was it Declan Rice skinned. I think it yes. was. Yes, about I six times. You know, it's not like once he skipped him, skinned him about six times. He left him skin on his rice pudding. Man, I, I haven't seen that happen since high school. Like just, just like the, you, you get in, in high in high school, you get sometimes that like the players that play like everyone's playing together, right? And then so you get somebody that plays and then somebody that doesn't really play. It was like playing defense or something like that. You just get skinned one time and another and another. And it's like, bro, you got you got to see what they're doing. Uh, it was amazing. And to be fair, the run by Wilson to go in between the to, in between those defenders was outstanding. But that ball was traveling like a missile. I mean, nearly killed Wilson as it went. Into... <laughs> uh, I, I'm sure it knocked all the air out of him, hit him right in the gut. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty impressive. So that's, that's where we went. So we didn't do bad. So that's a good start. So uh, let's see how we do this week, shall we? But first, before we go into the predictions, let's have a look at the. Uh, let's have a very quick look at fixture difficulty. And I'm not going to say I'm not going to explain how it is. You can go back and check our content from preseason how it works. But not to seven. Uh, one is be uh, not is best. Seven is worse. Obviously for the uh, viewers, we've got green and reds. Obviously green's great, reds bad. Current fixture difficulty, and there has been some slight amendments for teams who played at home and teams who played away, but very slight. Um, so attacking wise, um, top six now is Manchester City. This is at home. Manchester City, Liverpool, Chelsea, Manchester United, and Everton. And at the bottom, Crystal Palace, Brentford, Norwich, Arsenal, Wolves, and Villa. Um, it looks fairly straightforward. Manchester City and Liverpool at home with Chelsea just trailing in third. Quite standout for me at, at this moment in time. Manchester United, obviously, we'll see how that climbs in over time. Away from home, Liverpool in attack, top, Manchester City second, Chelsea, West Ham, Leicester. And at the bottom, Watford, Crystal Palace, Norwich, Wolves, and Everton um movers okay the movers this week Everton attack at home and West Ham attack away for obvious reasons okay um and right uh let's have a look at this and let's now move across to the defensive side of things so defense at home um best ranked defense now Chelsea at top 1.9 Brighton and City still 2.3. Whether Brighton are a trap remains to be seen. Uh, they didn't look great. Uh, Leeds 2.9 at home. Remember that Leeds fourth at home 2.9. Spurs 3.1. And at the bottom <laughs> um, Norwich. We've got right. We've got Norwich at the bottom. Uh, so read up Norwich, Brentford, Newcastle, Burnley, and Villa. Villa's defence. At home, not good, right? Still, they're not. They're not. This met this met these uh, matchups do not like Villa's defense 
one bit. Um, defensively wise, on the for away, Manchester City, Chelsea, Manchester United, Leicester, and Arsenal at the top and the bottom, flat bottom, and getting worse. Leeds. Now, Leeds are now really flat bottom, 5.2, followed by Southampton at 4.9. And that's 4.9 with Vestergaard, not without. So, you know, I'm, I'm not 100% sure about what's going on. Well, I've got a funny feeling what might happen in that game. Newcastle, 4.5. Brentford, 4.5. Palace, 4.5. And then, yeah, then a few others. Can, so, can, I, can I make a quick comment about Vestergaard? Of course you can. Of course you can. You know, I, I, Vestergaard's absence, I, I think, impacts Greenwood more than it impacts Bruno. Yeah. And I, 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 Bruno's success in, in game week one came from Robin Koch just being turned inside out in, in defensive mid. And, and that, I don't think that's going to happen with, with Romeo and, and James Ward-Prowse. Now, the, it's not like he's facing Kante, so it, I'm not saying that the matchup is bad for Bruno. But the the, Vest, the Bruno versus Vestergaard conversation, I find to be a little bit, um, just a little off. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. I mean, as I said, we're going to come on to the captaincy in a little while. But, I mean, the things which stand out for me for the defence is, you know, as I say, Leeds now, they got absolutely battered at Old Trafford, obviously. And Southampton got completely annihilated, particularly with respect, with respect to expected goals <laughs> At, Everett, at Goodison Park, didn't they? So I mean, that's not gonna that's not gonna help them one bit. So I think we will see this. This will slowly start to polarise as the season goes on. But we, at fixture difficulty at the moment, take it all with a pinch of salt. Yeah. Honestly, at this moment, I'm I'm not at all comfortable with all this fixture difficulty, and I won't be for a while. Um, but we'll slowly start to increase the effect of this season over the next six to eight weeks. Um, just looking a little bit further ahead, um, the long-range forecast for attack and defence now. So let's look at attack first. So the long-range, the teams who are in the best position with the best matchups in between game week two and six are Manchester City and Liverpool at two point one. That's average. So that's that's average matchups. So that is they're strong. Okay. Manchester United, not too bad at 1.2. Leeds at 1 and Chelsea at 0.9. So it suggests that we're going to start to see some Leeds uh, output from the strikers, I would say. Um, all these are pretty good because, you know, you're looking at some particularly good matchups. And, of course, there might be one or two which aren't. Um, defensively, Brighton. Um, so let me just move that across. But defensively, Brighton. Um, are the best at 1.2, but not as big matchups. And again, I think this continues to show the trend that at the moment there's probably more feeling that there's going to be goals than clean sheets. And that's something that I've been watching quite closely. You know, Manchester City 0.9. I think this is false. I think Manchester City has that their matchups are a bit weakened because of the amount of rotation at the end of last season affecting them. And that's what my matchups take that into account. Um, Manchester United at point eight. They also didn't have a particularly great end to the season. Chelsea point six, but Chelsea are playing Arsenal, Liverpool, Villa, Spurs, and Man City, and they've still got a positive point six. Right uh, after that run, they're just going to explode up this uh, the FDR. They're going to go crazy. They're yeah. going to be right at the top of that. You know, they you can just see they're going one way, right? Um, and Leicester at point three. Okay, now looking at this week then, now we're getting very close to getting into our predictions for this week. So the matchups for this week, who have the best matchups for this week? Well, Manchester City against Norwich, surprise, surprise, is the best matchup plus three for attack. Um, Liverpool plus two, Leicester 1.3. Then we've got Manchester United, Chelsea and Leeds and Villa all around the one mark. Notice Manchester United. It's not a fan. It, it's not a great matchup, actually. Hmm. We remember this, and and fans are going to be in the ground. So there's the first hint that we're either going to see this fixture difficulty going to get it right, or it could be horribly wrong. Hmm. And I'm not quite sure which way it's going to go. I'll let you guys have a go at that in the comments. Um, defensively, Brighton. 
2.3. Very positive matchup. Um, I, I think it was Hibbo and Nima who said something like, there was a question, are you going to play, you know, do I play Dunk? And I think the answer was, if you own Dunk, you play him this week. You don't. You don't own a Brighton defender to not play them against Watford. Mm -hmm. right? You don't home do against, it. Home against Watford, right? Yeah, at home. Yeah, home against Watford. You don't yeah. play them. You don't, you, don't, you don't bench them. Manchester City, obviously, very good defence if you can work out which ones are playing. Um, Chelsea, obviously, leads a good matchup for defence against Everton. 1.2, fourth best. Liverpool, 0.9 not too good is that a chris wood is that a chris wood ruiner incoming who knows um certainly that is spoiler alert that stopped me predicting liverpool to get a clean sheet this week mm. uh an average okay let's look at average so this is like your your, your attacking defenders perhaps you maybe your double haulers mm. manchester city 1.5 liverpool 1.1 Manchester United 1.0, Chelsea 0.8, Brighton 0.7. So it's playing right into the hands of players like Cancelo, like Trent, maybe Simicas. Let's if we're lucky, who knows? Uh, Luke Shaw, you know, and possibly another player who I will keep for you to bring up in a few minutes. <laughs> so right before we go into the the matchups for this week then i'm just going to uh have it we're just going to take a very very quick break uh and then we will as always i know you can't wait for this moment i'm going to just say what are you waiting for are you craving more fpl content then look no further than all about fpl.com Head over there for weekly articles from some of the top content creators on the planet. So what are you waiting for? Head over to allaboutfpl.com, the website for all your FPL needs. Ah, it just gives me enough chance to grab a drink, actually, and throw the cat off the table. <laughs> <laughs> what are you waiting uh, that's, for? That's probably, that's probably how you hurt your wrist. Yeah, well, yeah. The probably. Cat around so, so let's get into it then. And this is this is no rocket science. I don't think you too. I don't think there's much surprise about the first game that we have predicted is going to be two and a half goals or more, and that is Manchester City against Norwich. And look, it, it's absolutely crazy. They're they're just far too good. Um, they were second for chances created from the centre, four point seven. Uh, last season, third for chances from the right, 3.7 per, per 90, and fourth for chances created from the left at 3.6. Um, yeah, it, it's just about who you're going to pick. Uh, I think that's all you can say. A plus three fixture difficulty. Draft Hound has them at 59% for two and a half goals or more. That's pretty good. I don't own a single one of them. I I've had a massive fight with a certain company today about a sofa not being delivered. The fact is, my sofa is not big enough to hide behind. <laughs> I'm scared to death about this match. Um, it's a I good thing you have, yeah, you're, you're, you have boxes everywhere. You can just hide in the yeah, box. Yeah, I'm going to have to just hide behind the boxes, <laughs> aren't I? I it's, it's absolutely madness. I mean, what I did do, though, is I did pull out some data from last week's game. And all I've done, this is one game week. So, um, obviously, City against Spurs and Liverpool and Norwich against Liverpool right so I just grabbed that data and I just threw it into a matchup for for how the for the zonals and Norwich created a great load of chances down Liverpool's uh down uh, down their right or down sorry down their left because it's Manchester City's right so that that's you know that's crazy numbers that but I mean look it's too early to say but there may be just a slight chance for Norwich to do something down there on the basis of that but this looks to me like we're, we're looking at, uh, the, yeah, we're, we're looking at a Sterling and Mares and uh, and probably I don't know Cancelos of this world. Is KDB going to play? I I think he is. I I, I think he's yeah. I, I I think he'll be he'll be back. And, and any of these assets are are going to be good. And yeah. I'm like you. I don't I don't have any of them. So no. But it looks like Manchester City's attacks uh, chances are going to come from the flanks. That's yeah. what it suggests 
Although, okay. although, although when, when comparing just the one game, you know, when you're looking at a Liverpool matchup, so yeah, no, but it's that. But, but, it's, but it should be similar. Even that, you go back and you drag the old data out. It's similar. Mm, okay. It is similar. It is similar. Right. Okay. Moving on. Uh, let's look at the next one. Uh, and the next one is Liverpool against Burnley. Again, no real surprise, Gabe. Um, matchup of plus two. Um, the reason Burnley's defensive ratings are so high i mean this if <laughs> liverpool's rankings are really good but burnley's are pretty good away why because they were pretty good in 2019 20 and some of my data's pulled from there mm. so they're just going to get worse as they go unless they hold on to to what they're doing um you know uh they were fourth best away from home for chances uh 3.1 it's crazy um Draft count of them at 49% though for two and a half goals or more. That's Liverpool. So, you know, the matchups for Liverpool through 2021 against Burnley suggests that they're going to be strong through the middle, look 4.7. Liverpool look like chances coming through the middle and fairly equally from the left or right. Um, most of Liverpool's chance creation against Norwich went down the right. Their right versus the centre. So I think it was six versus three versus two and a half. Right, centre, left. Um, I'm going to lead you in here. I noticed that Burnley are pretty bad for headed chances conceded. This matched up with the chances that Liverpool created down there right suggests something. Yes. I'm going to say one more thing. I expect Anfield to be absolutely rocking. And yeah. I wouldn't be at all surprised if a certain man doesn't go off. But I'm going to put, I'm going to let you uh, say your piece. Okay, Here, here's my piece. <laughs> um, so <clears throat> Burnley last game week against against Brighton, who are no you know uh, offensive powerhouse or anything like that. They um, they had the third most attempts conceded from set pieces, six. They had the joint most headed shots conceded, five. And those two stats lead me to a set pieces and, and headed shots lead me to a certain player who is coming back from injury. Having had four ACL surgeries myself, I can't help but root for this guy. Uh, Virgil van Dijk is my little prince pick of the week. Um, I, he, he looks confident. He looks, he looks happy to be out there. Um, the matchups from set pieces, from the head headed shots perspective, is really good. And then the the one thing I'll add is um, Burnley also conceded the seventh most crosses from the left side last last game week. Um, these stats, these poor defensive stats, go back to last season as well. They were not a good team defensively last season. Uh, this narrative that they are, you know, that they're this they're gonna sit in this deep block and be very tough to break down. That hasn't been true for over a year now. Uh, and so I I like Trent to get an assist in this game from from Liverpool's right hand side, so from Burnley's left hand side. And and I like Van Dyke to score a, a set piece, a headed goal, a corner, or something like that, um, to, to get a double return in this game. Set a uh, goal and a clean sheet. So he's my um, little prince pick. Marvelous. So there we go. I'm not sure. I'm not sure many people own him actually. It's an interesting one. So we might be able to relax on that one and just hope for a Trent, Trent assist perhaps. Uh, so I think most of them. I think most of us own him. And then that's why you know Trent couldn't be the little prince. He's too obvious. It has to be a little nah, bit. Of the way right. You're right. It's boring. We we don't we don't we don't get anything for for being boring, do we? We, no. we need to. Oh, you try and pick something a bit interesting yeah. from time to time. So great. Okay, so Little Prince is BBD, and I agree. I like that one a lot. Um, oh, and just, just oh, shout out, oh. shout out, just a quick shout out to uh, to last week's Little Prince. So check. Oh yes, uh, he, he got. Sochek. Yes, he got one. Yeah, he did. He did get one. He got, yeah. I mean, yeah. it, he he got the rebound off of uh, Antonio's missed penalty. Well, he did, uh, but then he could, but, to be quite honest, he should have. He, he if he was only a a toenail away from another one as well, wasn't he? And there was another another one in the first half that, that he almost got as well. So yeah, it was a. It was a good shout. It was a good shout. Good well done. Yeah, you you need to remind me to put them up. Right, clean sheets. 
Oh dear, this is boring, isn't it? Um, uh, Manchester City, okay, plus two against Norwich. Um, yeah, draft down have them at sixty percent for a clean sheet. There's not a lot of data, of course, but they were top Manchester City for chance uh, for chances conceded from the left two, from the centre one point eight, and from the right one point five last season. Even with all that rotation at towards the end, um, as I say, it it could be interesting. I did mention about the fact that Norwich Norwich is right did have actually have that uh, poss possible positive match up there. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure about that, but I just think who who are City going to play at left back this uh, left side of defence this week? Zinchenko. Yeah, yeah, it won't be Mendy, it won't be Mendy, will it? So that. That probably puts that one right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <I think so. laughs> wow, maybe it was scary last, last yeah. game. Like, no, no, I think that probably puts that one right. So maybe that's not. So look, it's not a great deal of it. I'm, I'm going to skip through this because I think the key is we're going to have a look at a focus match up in a second, which I think we can debate a bit more because I think it's quite more a bit more interesting. We will go to Brighton though. Brighton against Watford. I've already mentioned this. Um, Brighton's numbers are great. You know, uh, they have a plus 2.4, so match up. So even better than uh, than City uh, on paper against Norwich, against Watford, of course. Um, and again, if, if we look at the um, if we look at the zones, um, it, you know, it looks OK. But saying that, look, you know, we're talking about Watford. <laughs> it looks like Watford could create chances down the centre according to this so everything you know the numbers look good but then we start looking into it in a little bit more detail and uh, is this uh, are we looking like we might face a problem or two here uh, i don't know um i would play them i would play my brighton but i have mean, no option i've got to play sanchez um but i'm not i'm fairly comfortable but uh, you know i'm not 100 percent happy about this game i mean ben white's gone what about you um you know, where, do you, where do you come from with Brighton? Who's who? In, what about you guys in the chat? You know, do you, are you seeing Brighton clean sheet this week, or are you expecting an early bath for it again, like it was last week? Because it was really bad last week, wasn't it? We spoke extensively about Brighton in in preseason and how they were. They they had the they had the best early fixtures. Uh, their their assets were priced, you know, priced to buy, but. It, it never felt good, did it? We were never happy owning any Brighton assets. And, you know, I, I, I went with Sanchez not feeling good about it, but not liking any of the other assets. So I'm honestly, I don't, I don't expect anything from any of my Brighton assets. I hope for a clean sheet. But if, if Brighton, if Watford score, I, it, it should not surprise any of us. No. And Veltman's still out, isn't he? So yes. Veltman's still out. Lant is still out. Uh, you know, they've still got uh, Burns still out. I think I think Burns still out as well, so they're, they're they're down to playing Duffy again, by the looks of things. So yeah, this is one of those ones. So I, I mean, look, I, I wouldn't be bringing a Brighton defender in for this. That you know, if if people if I if 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 this pricks your ears up, this fixture difficulty pricks your ears up. I suggest <laughs> I suggest perhaps you look at it slightly differently. Uh, this is one that I think I could oppose. But I've left it in because it tops the because it tops the the matchups, right? Um, Neither, no result should surprise us. If Brighton keep a clean sheet, it makes sense. And if they don't, I think it also makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Um, just in closing, before I go off clean sheets, um, I mentioned Chelsea earlier on. Um, I've stopped short of Chelsea clean sheet this week, but I wouldn't be at all surprised mm. at all. I still wouldn't be surprised. Um, so yeah. Um, Interesting to see what people want to say. People are just confirming Veltman's out, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's. Uh, <laughs> so someone wanted me to say the Mar the, the Sanchez quote. What is it? Uh, Sanchez doesn't have to save many, but he doesn't save many of those which he has to save. Is that right? <laughs> That's not bad. That's pretty good. <laughs> That's not bad. Continent fell in a ditch yesterday, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's have a quick look at this uh, in focus game. And we've picked Leeds against Everton, guys, because 
I actually think this is the game I want to watch this week. You know, even with Rich Allison playing, because you know me, I don't get on with him. You don't get on with him. No, not at all. <laughs> but that said, I'm really quite interested in this game. Let's run through the, the matchups and, and, and everything. So Leeds uh, at home attack 2.7 ranked six. Uh, Everton defence away rank 3.7 at 16th. That's not good. Leeds defence at home 2.9 ranked fourth in the fixture difficulty. And Everton attack away 4.1. And that's ranked 16th so that starts to tell us that you know probably explains why uh, a certain calvert lewin doesn't feature anywhere near the top of the match at uh, the top of the captaincy metric that's spoiling a little bit of a spoiler for later but look i'm just going to set the scene here draft hound 44 percent leads win 31 percent everton win 23 percent leads two and a half goals or more 17 percent everton two and a half goals or more uh 29 leads clean sheet 22 percent everton clean sheet oh, a bit meh not much there really not for me anyway um look at these key areas okay um leads attacking against everton they will create chances and they look to be spread all over uh left center and right all about the same 3.3 Per, on average per 90 uh in the center and the right and 3.4 on the left and for the people who are watching and um i've actually put the calculations down at the bottom of the screen as well which you'll be able to to uh to understand hopefully it's fairly straightforward um everton um they will uh, look to be creating according to these numbers and matchups 3.2 chances down the left 3.7 through the middle okay which looks good okay that to me looks that's interesting at that level and 2.6 on the right so yeah so it looks like everton the chances everton get will be down the center or possibly coming down the left but this is where it it becomes a bit interesting gabe because we were looking into this because you said to me didn't you you said I'm not 100% sure about Calvert-Lewin this week. Uh, you got me thinking about it. And we said so we were we were hunting around, weren't we, for a trap of the week. Yeah. And we we sort of like, we're over an hour in a little bit. And we started looking at it. And I pulled a very interesting stat. And if we look at Leeds' chances, they concede conceded 106 chances down the center last season away from home that's 5.6 a game down the center mm. and of course this key area is conceded doesn't take into account home or away it just gobbles the whole lot up so Leeds at home on the other hand only conceded 68 chances that's 3.6 per, per 90. Everton, on the on the other hand, home and away attacking creations down the center, um, 51 away, 2.6, 54 at home, 2.8. Doesn't make much difference. Mm. So this has an effect. And this means that the trap of the week is Calvert-Lewin. Mm -hmm. And why? Because if we then take these new numbers and we put them in to the matchup, hopefully, is it going to appear? Come on. You better, it's not, there we go. I was about to swear then. That was, that was going to be much worse. <laughs> I think Bungle was very polite. <laughs> Look what it does to the matchups with respect to the chances. Mm. 2.6 down the left, 3.1 and 2.3 that is nothing like a good matchup now that's you know it's not good at all add in leads ground full calvin phillips back i i think 
this could be the this could be the this could be the trap for us this week. What do you think? Yeah. I'm 100 on board with this trap. Uh, I I think. Yeah, I, I don't think what what Everton managed to eventually do in game week one, I don't think it'll be that easy for them in game week two. And I, I think that home field advantage is just enormous for Leeds, uh, even more more so than than other teams. You know, when you have a, such a predictable um, attack, whereas last season three hundred Everton had three hundred and seventy seven crosses from the left compared to only two hundred and eighty five from the right. Um, Townsend could change that dynamic, but but even you know you can't rely you can't rely on Andrews Townsend to change an entire team. So I, I think Leeds are, it's, I think they're going to read Everton well, um, and with Phillips back is going to make a world of difference. Yeah. So there we go. I mean, I'm not sure everybody agrees with us, but uh, so Rajveer now DCL will do something. He he may well, but I, I'm. What I'm saying is that he's not as good a pick as people think. That's that. That's what I think we're getting at here. And I think both, if we looked at the the general fact that Leeds are so much better at home than they are away defensively, and then we look and and and, and that statistic, that 106 chances away from home. I tell you what. That makes me target leads away from home virtually every single week now. Yeah. Honestly. You know, and I think I'm learning more and more. But you're teaching you you you're teaching me this, Gabe, because you know, I never used to look at zones till this till this <laughs> but I, I do now. Wait, wait till we get hopefully someday we can get somebody that'll provide us with XG data from specific areas of the field, then that will get some really interesting well stuff. then somebody if anybody's got that please get in touch with us at net that hall because we will gladly take it off you i mean hell hippo might even buy you a beer uh, <laughs> <laughs> or nima might or nima might buy you a beer and then buy you a beer and then sit on your lap and he's speaking to you who knows yeah um, nima, nima too i think is what they're calling i, I, mean, I can't buy anybody beers at the moment because i'm not in london to be able to buy people beers but I will do one day soon, hopefully. Right, okay, so there we go. There's the trap. And the hauler of the week, I've gone with Cancelo. Now, God, I hope he plays. Because what happened last week with um, <laughs> with Zuma. Uh, but he is a bit of a punt. And if we can get through the roulette, you know, his, his numbers are really good. Expected points at home, 5.7 from last season. Um, 2.01 key passes, 0.42 big chances created, 0.26 XA, uh, 0.08 XG, not great. But... You know, and this is where, and again, I like to sense check what I do. And Fantasy Football Hub prediction tools has Cancelo at 74% for an anytime return this week. So, and he's above Trent. Trent is 71. So that's interesting as well. So I'm going to go with Cancelo. They've got a good average matchup of 1.5. Uh, Manchester City down the right, 5.5 expected, 5.5 chances uh, creation down there. Uh, if he's down the right, and if he's down the left, it's 4.5 because we don't know where he's going to play if he plays at all. But yeah. I just think we give it a go. Um, you're going to have to do this next week because I'm not here. But I'll let <laughs> you'll have to you'll have to you'll have to uh, you know. You can you can castigate me live on 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 net that hall next week if I got if if this is wrong. Well, this is my show. Uh, but anyway, Sleepy Joe, you're going to have to predict next week. <laughs> That's right. And God knows what's going to happen there. Uh, well, <laughs> uh, I might have to skip this one. No, no, <laughs> no Sleepy Joe will predict. I'll, I'll predict. I'll do it for you, man. We might have to change your name because that's not a very top, popular name at the moment. Uh, but anyway, right. <laughs> Let's let's uh, just have another tiny little break, and then we'll dive into the algo. Then we'll do the captain symmetric, take a couple of questions, and then get out. Okay, ready? So algorithm, um, the rules are up on the screen. Uh, 
yeah, team value initially 100 it'll increase as team value increases that's 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 fabulous because the first thing i tried to do is plug this into that other team that i created and i got priced out of <laughs> 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 So God knows what I'm going to do with it next week. I was literally smashing the computer this afternoon when I was trying to get it. I had to take a minus 20 to change the team as well. <laughs> I and then I thought, Christ, have I, chased me on, have I changed my own team or have I changed the Algo? Thank Ooh, God. I'm that's stressful. Yeah, that's what it was. It was a bit worried. I'm not on a good day as it is. Um, so anyway, the rules, no more than three players greater than 30% risk. Uh, rotation risk over the last six. Uh, no more than double up in defence with a goalkeeper uh, or again in attack. We're trying to be a bit flexible. The, the algorithm works on fixture difficulty a lot. So what happens is it it, it tends to home in on multiple picks. Um, we're still It's still in work in progress. Minimum 3.5 expected points. Final shift 15 shortlift by, uh, by the algorithm and, and the budget. And then captures, captain comes from the algorithm uh as the vice captain does but we do select by form uh although i've annoyed it today i've actually i was that pissed off earlier i changed it so anyway how did we do last week um we got 89 points without bruno so that's not bad i don't think i mean i don't know what the uh, i don't know what the average sort of score without bruno was i mean if anyone is anyone on the on the on in the chat who didn't have Bruno? What scores did you get, guys? Just just drop them in there if you were Brunos. I mean, um, it's, it was still twenty points above the average. Yeah, still pretty so. good. Yeah, not too bad. Um, but anyway, it had Sanchez in goal. It, it returned from Trent, Aspilicueta, and Rudiger. It had Dean, um, Suchek. It picked. Um, it had Mane fail. It obviously captain Sal. It had Greenwood. It had Antonio, and it had the benched in the acho i told you he'd been drinking last week brodge <laughs> i still don't know why on earth it didn't why why he's not playing i have no idea no. but anyway and yeah and a load of crap on the bench as we've said um so yeah i think it was expected to get 65.9 points according to fantasy football hub so it got 89 but to be honest a lot most expected points were under what the actual points were last week weren't they yeah, yeah. Uh, let's be honest so anyway so what we're doing this week and it's been a bit of a tough one this week i've got to be honest um because the premiums have all been up there and it's about which premiums to go with um but look the metrics gone this week or the map the metric the algorithm's gone this week with sala and it's gone with sterling and that's because of the rotation risks of a lot of the other players. Uh, Manchester, you, know, you could pick a chunk of Manchester City players, but they've all got that rotation risk. And the way the algorithm works, it doesn't like it. So it was it picked. So it's gone with a 4-4-2 again, but it's only predicted 62.7 points. And it's gone with Sanchez in goal again, because he's 4.5 and he's cheap and he comes out. And it's almost like the last thing we've got to do. Diaz. Aspilicueta again because of rotation risk. Dunk this week. Um, Trent, Salah and Sterling, captain start Salah, Sterling vice captain. Greenwood is picked Harrison. Now you you turned your nose up at that game. Yeah, I, I think I'd, I think I'd rather if I had the two, I'd rather I'd rather start Ailing. Yeah, well, I might change it. Yeah, if you want, I don't mind. Sorry. Could we do it? Just Could we do but, but, it? Same I, might, I, I might have a bias uh, against yeah. Harrison. Yeah, again, I'm just know. not quite sure about that clean sheet. That's the only thing I would say. Right. Whereas I think Harrison might be better. It's come with Werner. What do you think about that? It, but it was a, it was an absolute. It was a like a tumbleweed moment trying to pick a forward this week. Mm. It really was. You know, because the forwards who are possibly be picking the algorithms not got yet because they've not got enough games in them. And I think that was a big, that that's a big problem. I think Jesus would have been a great pick there, but rotation, it's not going to pick these rotated players. So. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly it. Because yeah. I mean we're trying to get we're trying to get the highest score that we can in that game week, and we won't get any points if they stay on the bench, right? Or they don't it, play. Is it anticipating Lukaku's <laughs> inclusion in the team? God, so God, God, the God, I mean, I don't yeah. know what we're gonna do with that. We might have to break the, we might have to break the algorithm. <laughs> Maybe, <laughs> to get, uh, to get him in, I have no idea. Maybe the algorithm has developed some some AI. We have to yeah, kill, kill the Terminator. 
yeah and even with a really poor fixture and it does pick that to be honest the metric and everything picks that uh west ham matchup with leicester has been tough it's still you know we've still had to pick antonio because of price and everything else is the only one sat there um you know it, it nearly picked chris wood over him there we go at, at liverpool <laughs> <laughs> they anyway. can see chances liverpool's yeah. defense is still not, yeah. not it good. was very close to popping popping antonio off the page actually mm. um yeah so we're going to bench ailing we're going to bench brownhill and davis well davis yeah, is injured anyway but it's just 4.5 so we have our 4.5 junk there um let's see how it does that's all we can do really um isn't it we'll see it's a bit of fun but it's good to try and identify them one or two players who might pop off and i think that's the that's the key that hopefully as we start to get a bit more information in the season then this will become a little bit more of a an interesting yeah. section it's a bit fun yeah a bit more refined so okay it's time to move across to captaincy for one hour 20 in i think we're doing all right for time so we can spend a bit of time on this um how did we do last week well those of you remember the metric captained uh Salah last week it was very boring but you know what boring's pretty good because we're on the board with 34 points so uh with a game rank of this night the algo team game rank of oh, no that's mine is that mine no that's not mine no that's the other team original official rank of 42,000. maybe it is picking my team no it's picking my team isn't it look I'm going to change that. At, at, at this rate, the, the metric will, will end up with no, 1,292. It's, no, it's, it's wrong. I'll tell you what, that's looking at my team. I'm going to have to change that. It's been stupid. But it's the same pick. Yeah, but it's the same pick anyway. But there we go. 34 points. So very nice. Um, we'll see how that goes. We'll keep that going because um, Hibbo gave us a great idea to do this because what we want to do is try and track it officially rather than just. Um, yeah, just un unofficially, so to, so to speak, so to speak. Right. It's time to reveal the metric for this week. And this is going to be an interesting one. And I think there's going to be a hell of a lot of debate about this. So I'm really looking forward to it. Are we See ready? It. Do it. And there we go. And... I'm just waiting the silence and I'm waiting for people to start commenting in the group with that. Here we go. Last week for context. Okay. Sala was top with 86 ranked out uh, with respect to the metric. He got obviously three returns. Uh, Mane second, 82. Jota, 80. Bruno, 79. And he obviously got three returns from a rank of 79. And he was fourth in the metric. This week you have to look a long way down for bruno wow. a long way down right this really confused me but i'm going to bear with us guys i'm going to run through this first of all salah let's be honest he tops the metric he's fresh from a hall the fixture difficulty is 115 it's not as good as last week but combined with his form it still holds off the Manchester City assets who have better fixture difficulty but they have the rotation so that's why Salah jumps above them as for Bruno it's a Bruno from the metric this week and hear me out he was outstanding last week I was delighted to own him um but I'm not going to sugarcoat it since game week 25 he was 18th with respect to returns for midfield an xg of 0 0.31 he was 10th for expected goal involvement at 34 percent and he wasn't even in the top 20 for shots in the box for big chances or for xa mm -hmm. that's it so there we go now let's look at it the other side southampton are poor right Vestergaard is gone. There's changes in defence afoot, but it's enough for the metric to switch it, switch off from him. Okay. Now, 
this is where it becomes interesting because I started to go, Christ almighty, what are we going to do here? Um, so I sense checked it. And I sense checked it with Draft Hound. And sense checks, the metric sense checks six out of the top seven expected goal scorers from Draft Hound are in the metric at the top. Sala, 63. Yotta, 52. He's further down. Jesus, 51. Sterling, 51. Mares, 48. Okay. If you take the top five of that metric, Sala, De Bruyne, Jesus, Sterling, Mares. Okay. The average expected uh, to any time uh, any time goal scorer is 52% in draft hound. The next five is 40%. The next five is 39%. And the bottom five is 35%. This metric is following without being influenced in any way by some bookies odds in general. So and another, another way to phrase that is some bookies odds are seem to be following your metric there. They may be following my metric. <laughs> yes, I did think that. Um, but look, it's, I think I'd really love to, I'm going to have to look through these comments and see what people read. But Let's be honest here. KDB would be top of this metric if you haven't have been rotated that length of time. So anyone who has KDB in your side and you think he's going to start, honestly, it's an excellent captaincy shout this week. Amazing captaincy shout, actually. Better than Sala in the, from the perspective of the metric. But the metric has killed him because of the rotation risk. I've left it on the screen. Normally, I would hide it but I'm showing it because I want you to be able to see what we've had to think about this week. But yeah, uh, Jesus, eight, Jesus, 81, okay? Sterling, 80. Mares, 80. Mane, 79. There are some great captaincy options this week. What's your perspective, Gabe? Just while I have a look through the... If, I mean, the first thing I'd say is if I had KDB, I'd probably captain him over Salah. Um, but, but I, you know, obviously I, I don't, and, and Salah, I, I, I haven't gone away from Salah. Um, so I don't know this, it seems to make sense to me anyway. I'm just looking at the elements, um, Salah's haul percentage. I, I find it concerning. Yeah. Well, he's only had one recently. He hadn't had, he, you know, what happened at the end of last season, he didn't have any. Exactly. It goes um, back to 12 game week, whereas KDB, when he's when he's when he's playing, he hauls. Yeah. You know, yeah. when he plays, he hauls. And uh, I mean, obviously, Bruno's only uh, Bruno's numbers with respect to returns and hauls are worse than Salah. Yeah. In the last 12, you know, he's only had six single returns and one double return in the last 12. So, look, I mean, is it recency bias? Is it just the fact that? It's so obvious that this thing isn't picking it, that Bruno's going to go crazy. You've already said you think Greenwood might be the person to go crazy this week. Um, uh, someone, someone in the chat did mention that uh, Cavani's already, he's training. So that there, I, I think there's, at least they have concern about, about Greenwood this week. So that, that Greenwood could be could be Cavani. Uh, the, the other thing I'll mention here is just, Look, looking back at our trap, look at all the red for Calvert, Calvert Lewin, which makes sense for the trap of the week. And I'll, and I'll point your attention specifically to the FDR, which is not great because it's leads at home. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it sums it up quite nicely, doesn't it? But look, I mean, guys, this is what it does. It got it, it got eighty percent right last year. We've not changed anything, and certainly the bit or the bits that we did, we've changed some tiny bits. But the bits that we did would have absolutely no impact on Bruno this week. I can guarantee you that. This is where he is on the basis of the way the fixture difficulty works, on the basis of the way the matchups are calculated, and the way the captaincy metric, which hit 80% last week, last year, is calculating things. So, as I say, I was very concerned when I first saw this. It nearly kept me awake last night trying to figure out what to do with it. Um, but once you sense check it, I'm a lot happier with it. I'm not saying Bruno won't return. I mean, Bruno may well even haul. We do see hauls coming from further down the metric. But I think if you were, and but for me, I think the very, very obvious captain this week is Salah at home. 
and that's where I'm going. I'm following the metric. I'm following I'm the metric as well. Salah at home. And there's another reason I'm going Salah at home. I own Bruno, but I also own Greenwood. So that's my safety net. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I'm thinking. That's my safety net there. Because I think if you know if, if Bruno pops off and Salah perhaps doesn't, at least I might be able to soften the blow by perhaps getting something from Greenwood mm -hmm. um, as well. But uh, but we'll see. We'll see. Um Goal score. So, what's goal scored percent in the last comp? That's that's the draft hound numbers. Rot RR rotation risk. Okay. So, just if people are just asking them, and I'm happy people are uh, are asking as well. Okay. That's that. So, let's see what happens. Let's see if this thing's right. It'd be lovely if it was. Um, and if it's not, then you can field all the slack, uh, flack next week because I'm not here. <laughs> 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 I'll, I'll just spend the, the whole episode trashing stats and do a full eye test. Yeah, do, next yeah. Week. It's a no stat. This is this is a no stat podcast. No, no, no stat, stat zone. No stat zone next week. No mariner. I'm moving house. By the way, no, no, no. It's, it's a um, mutiny. Yeah, I'm moving house. So I've got to I've got to uh, sort things out. But but yeah, uh, <laughs> let's quickly look at the cat pick. So last week, um, well, utter disgrace sat next to me at this very moment in time fast asleep but um you know he could easily have turned into a pair of slippers uh, <laughs> i mean let's hope and see if he can do any better this week but but look we always put the poll out and this week the the community poll's gone with sala 61 percent bruno 28 percent mares 12 percent uh, we already gave three options because we were we we're running around a bit this week i'm afraid with various things and uh i have the uh and uh, it's a shame you can't actually see the inner workings of um <laughs> of Streamyard, mate because uh the, the the clip i've now put it inside the clip but it's not called the cat pick it's the t-a-w-a-t-w-a-t pick because <laughs> so, he bit me earlier so i hate him so anyway here is here is the cat pick for this week and it's between Sala and Bruno. Bruno. Bruno is the pick. Well, and, for those for those that are upset that Bruno was so low in the uh, in the, the metric cat picked it anyway, so you're fine. So you have remember, remember what happens if the cat doesn't pick the person who's at the top. So what happened last year when the cat picks the when cat picks someone further down? Mm. Yeah. Might have to change my captaincy. Uh, Jolene's team, my wife, is uh, is called Cat Pick and Chill. So she's so she'll definitely have to captain. <laughs> she's definitely have to captain Bruno, or else she's gonna have to change her name. Exactly. <laughs> right. Okay. That's the content. We're at one thirty-three. Should we take ten minutes of questions and then make a? Make a move, Gabe. Um, just what do you want to have a look through? See what sort I'll have a look through. Uh, we haven't we haven't got anybody to help us this week by putting questions by extracting the questions in advance, right? Which is always a problem. Um, okay, there's just a few comments. Yeah, Bruno was exhausted at the end of the last season. His performance definitely dropped. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's very fair. Um, yeah, I mean. There's some comment contents about the uh, the algorithm, which I think is fair enough. Um, here's the first question from Football Brain: Shall I play Mbueno instead of Ben Rama, as he is playing a striker, but in FPL as a mid versus Crystal Palace? Would you play uh, him over Ben Rama, Gabe? What's your views? No, 
I, absolutely, I wouldn't play. I don't. I don't think I'd play many players over over Ben Rama these days. It's, he's in such good form. And the the other thing about uh, Mbomo is, um, with he'll mostly. So Brentford fans feel that they will play with four at the back against an easier opposition. If Brentford go to four at the back, that puts Mbomo on the right wing and not up top. I I can't say. I I, I can't comment to as. To that at all because I, I don't watch the championship. So uh, Mbomo is the, the was the first player that stood out in game week one, obviously because of that first match, really get, getting beyond Tony and taking up uh, really advanced positions. But very much a wait and see. Um, I think he could he'll present good value most of the season. But as far as expectations go, I think we should see him a little bit more before we begin to expect anything from him. Yeah, uh, that Palace Brentford game is a really interesting one for me. I, I, I agree. Really. Uh, again, another game that I think I'd quite like to watch. I think it could be. I think it could be blood and thunder. It's a real, you know, it's a London, it's a London derby. You know, fans back in Sellhurst. Uh, yeah, you know, I used to live quite close to Sellhurst. I will tell you what, it rocks. It's an old I, I, stadium. It rocks in there. I, I think that could be a, a an outside shot for two plus two two and a half or more goals. As in Palace. As in. Brentford. Either one, honestly. Yeah, <laughs> could, be, I, could be either one. I'm excited for that game. I think I'll probably watch it. Yeah, that's an interesting one because I've actually picked in a, in this differential thing I do for FPL Serpent every week. And I'm topping that league as well because I was the only one who went with Ben Rama last week. Um, I, I've gone with Zaha. Yes, I like it. <laughs> I'd never pick him for my own team. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'd never pick him in my own team, but you know what? If I don't have to worry about that. Um, so hang, hang on a second. Uh, we've got Masha here. He's not really a quick, just a yes or a no, Gabe. I've got Grealish and Barnes. Can I be optimistic of a return from them this week? <laughs> it sounds a bit depressed. <laughs> Masha, yes, be optimistic, buddy. Always be optimistic. <laughs> I, mean, I, think, I, I mean, look, um, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's entirely possible. We know that... Uh, I mean, West Ham can be great. They can be great sometimes, but equally at home, sometimes they struggle in front of their own fans. I, I've seen I've seen the questions about. Uh, there was a question earlier on in the show about Gundogan um, and replacing Gundogan. Definitely hold off on replacing Gundogan. It seems like he he trained yesterday or he did some kind of training. It, it was a shoulder injury, so there's there's a chance he could play. Um, so just just hold off. Don't make any moves early. All right, okay. Uh, gold FPL, Barnes. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, bench one, Barnes or Tony? Woo. Do you want me to go first? Yeah, you go first. I bench Harvey Barnes. Yeah, I agree. I just I, I didn't want it to sound like it was bias coming through, so it's no. good that you went first. Uh, no, play Tony. I, I, I would bench Harvey Barnes, I think. I've, I've got a feeling that Tony, this could be the week, I think, you know, well, I hope it is, because I own him. <laughs> <laughs> Ashkai, uh, thoughts on Yotta this week? Subbed at 60 minutes last week, or 61 minutes, but with nine points. Stats through the roof. Playing Burnley. I, I think he'll, he'll get 30 minutes, right? Do you reckon? Do you reckon it's be the other way around this week? Yeah. Now that. there's rumors that Firmino that the the South American players when they go to the international break in game week 3 are going to have to quarantine when they come back. Firmino is one of them. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Uh, uh, for that reason we need some more clarity on this but Yota could become quite an interesting option. I mean by that I think you mean he could start two right. games in a row and then yes. be a rotation risk again i know but you know what i mean but i certainly probably wouldn't i'd, I'd be a bit more okay i'd be perhaps more keen to keep hold of him yes. until we know what's what's happening i'm not saying i'll potentially bring it's him tough though. it's it's tough to to hold him when greenwood is doing so well and ne nima mentioned you know so someone said that cavani was back in training but nima just mentioned in the chat that that Cavani didn't. They had a friendly, I think, yesterday or the day, or a couple of days ago, and yeah. Cavani didn't even feature in that friendly. He did not even to get like his legs ready or anything. So 
So Greenwood should be, it's, it's hard to, if you have Jota and you don't think he's going to start this week, it's hard to not go to Greenwood no. or, or even, even a city player. Yeah, um, there's a question from FPL Bro particularly it's about the metric actually. I'm surprised TAA doesn't appear on that list at all, especially with assist potential discussed earlier in the free kicks and clean sheets. Fair point, but I've not put any defenders in there yet. It's too early in the season. I, we, we will add players in from as we did last year. We started to add players in who were returning. Uh, examples, players like Rafinha. Uh, Gundawan was brought in, even though he's very low priced, and did actually top the metric on occasions, mm-hmm. uh, as did Rafinha. But at this early stage in the season, the metric's going to stay with um, premium players. I'm not saying D- D- uh, TAA isn't a premium player, but there's another reason as well. Do we think TAA is going to get a clean sheet? I'm not 100% sure. Remember what Liverpool's defence has been like. But it's improving, and I think, you know, I've got double Liverpool. I hope they keep a clean sheet. I really do. Um, okay. Uh, does Sir Oliver have a special corner in the new house for his captaincy pick? So that he doesn't uh, – This is that's an interesting one, isn't it? Yeah, he probably does, and he hopefully might not go left. Um, right, okay. Um, who else have we got? So that, uh, dum, 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 dum. Start Webster or Tony? Well, I know what I'm going to say, but you can say that one, Gabe, first. Start Tony. Yes. You know, yeah, start Tony. Agreed. Uh, 100%. Yeah. Um, now there's another one. Webster or Dean? Oh, mm. that's a little bit more. That's a little closer. Yeah. I, I think... Oh, my goodness. That's uh, a tough one. Oh, it is, isn't it? Oh, I, might, I might go with Webster. Uh, I might go with Webster there, but I think his ceiling's low, and I think that's why Dean at least has the option of a double of returns, the other attacking return as well. And You know? You know, we, we said I, that, that don't don't expect a bright and clean sheet. Right? No. So if, if, if that's not expected, then what else yeah. do you have with? We maybe have to go Dean then. I, I think I would go Dean, and if Dean gets a return and he's on my bench and I played Webster over him, I I don't know if I would be able probably, to forgive myself for a little while. Yeah, I reckon you'd kick yourself around the house, wouldn't you? Or, or yeah. I'd find, or I'd find, you know, you'd find the cat, kick the cat, you know. <laughs> no violence, no violence. <laughs> bench one, Ailing or Barnes from Nehal. That's tough. That is tough as well. Mm. But you know what? Uh, I oh, heck. I, I'm, look, I'm going to go with. I'm going to bench Ailing because I think I'm going to bench Ailing over my midfielders this week. So I'm going to stick with what I'm planning on doing. Yeah, bench Ailing. I agree. Fair enough. Uh, and Hibbo. The double Brighton defence would make me nervous. Yeah, and me and all, mate. <laughs> right, boys, unless there's any more questions, I'll give you just a few seconds. We're going to get out of here. Um, so um, there's one more question, actually. There's one more. And that is, it came from YouTube, and I'm pleased I just looked at my notes because I've just seen it. Pavan R is thinking of Barnes to Sun without a hit. Would he do that, or so he must have some money? So he must have some money in the bank, right. or would he save? Would you save the transfer, Gabe? What would you do? I would act on my bias one hundred percent and get Son and get rid of Barnes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're biased. I but am you're... biased. I I mean, what's what's why is, so? Why save the transfer if you save money in the bank? Surely you've, so you've left money in the bank so you could make this transfer, whatever that transfer would be. So I say act on it, spend that money. I mean, look, it's a great pick. I know I know the conversations in our WhatsApp group on that, that hall are all week have been how the hell do we get Son into our teams? And, and when I you know when I shared you know when I shared the team I started with 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 you guys in, in our chat, the Hibbo's comment. Was when everyone's trying to get Son, you're already going to have him. 
and that's that's the situation I'm in. That's so I say if you have an easy way to sign, go. Yeah, and, and he's a, he's a absolute one hundred percent hide behind a sofa job. He is he's that player who makes me hide behind sofas if I don't own him. Yeah, yeah, I think that says enough. So I tend to I think your I think your bias is probably correct, Mr. <laughs> Lennon. <laughs> right that's it let's get out of here um what have we got coming up twitter spaces saturday lunch asia time uh, uh saturday morning india um, uh friday back- evening west coast U- u.s time yeah <laughs> middle of the night for those of you you know if you're just leaving the rave in london yeah and you're looking for some fbo content if, um, if you sat on the night bus on the way home in through South London and you want to get some get onto Twitter and get onto Twitter spaces and it'll probably make perfect sense because you'll be blind drunk. Exactly. Well, the, the one thing I'll say, <laughs> so last week was Fantasy Football Fest and apparently a common theme of, of the fest is people getting drunk and taking the wrong train or the train in, or somewhere in the wrong direction and having to take an Uber or something paying like a hundred quid to get an Uber back. That happened to several people. So if that happens to you, Friday night, tune in the Twitter spaces. Tune in there for you. Who, who's helping you this week? Not me, I'm afraid, because I'm busy. But Bungle the Gooner, and also we've got Sean so, uh, at Vegan Boy as well. Um, they're going to be helping you out. And everybody else, you go and help Gabe out as well. We would love to see you there. Hell, if I can get in for 10 minutes, I will come in. Um, apart from that, guys, please like the uh video if you haven't already uh please hit the subscribe button please leave comments we'll answer your questions all the way up to the deadline but post them in the youtube comments please because we'd like to we'd like you to use the youtube channel and we know a lot of you are not on twitter so we've got to get it out of our heads that everything goes through twitter so look we're willing to take any questions anywhere okay instagram youtube whatever get hold of us we'll help you out Apart from that, I would just wish you the best of luck for game week two. Uh, And of course, I want you to net that haul. All the best, guys. Take care. Bye-bye. Peace. Peace. Bye-bye.